Today we're going to use zero-width characters to hide secret messages in plain text documents on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Some of you may be familiar with image-based stenography. In that, we conceal text messages in images usually by editing the least significant digit of each pixel in order to hide a message. Now, we can't do the exact same thing with text because there's not really any number as far as pixels and text really work, but there is Unicode. Unicode is what's used to encode text on most browsers. And by Taking advantage of the fact that Unicode has to support all languages spoken in the world and not just English, we can take some of those characters which are used in other languages but not English to make our own hidden code. Particularly what we're going to take advantage of are a handful of characters which take up no space when they're displayed. These zero-width characters, such as the zero-width space and zero-width non-joiner, are particularly useful for us to use in a binary format, and then by using them in binary, we can make any message we want and conceal it in otherwise normal looking text. Now, if this sounds interesting to you, all you need to do to get started is have an internet connection so you can access some web pages which will encode these characters for you. Now, if you get confused at any point, check out the link in the description below. But otherwise, let's get started. Now, if you take a look at this Craigslist ad, it looks like a pretty benign everyday snow demon <laughs> for sale. But what's important here is the text and what I would say is the most realistic and useful use case for zero width characters. If you look at the text of the ad, it looks pretty normal. But if you take that text and you copy it, and then paste it into a program like Stranographer, then we should be able to reveal the hidden private message, which in this case is a link to this website here, which contains some hidden saucy fan fiction, looks like. Yeah, okay. But anyway, the use case here would be if you were trying to communicate between two individuals, who absolutely could not be seen communicating. One individual would be able to post an ad on Facebook or Craigslist or somewhere else public like that and use zero width characters to encode these hidden messages in something that looks fairly normal. And in that way, they would be able to communicate together. Now I did a link in this case, but I could have written a whole novel here and it would still appear the same link. So what are we actually doing here or what's being done? Well, we're taking advantage of two zero width characters, the zero width non-joiner, which normally is used in languages like Persian. For example, you can see how this word here is sort of connected, but it's split. We're at, and that's because of this non-joiner character. Otherwise, in Unicode, it would be displayed like this. So obviously these characters aren't used in languages like English. So that makes them very useful for us because we can take them and use them in a binary format. So for example, we can use zero width non-joiner as a one, and we could use a zero width space as a zero. And in that fashion, we can write a program like this or a web page like this that essentially what it'll do is it'll convert any arbitrary string into binary data and then convert that binary data back into a string of ones and zeros and then start replacing those ones and zeros with those unicode characters and form this rudimentary binary code now you don't have to use these specific zero width characters for zero and one. You could actually use any number of characters. Uh, and if you go to the article I wrote on this, you can find a whole list of them, such as the Mongolian vowel separator and left to right mark and right to left mark. 
Although I wouldn't fool around with the left to right and right to left marks too much because that could mess with the way your text displays. And speaking of that, it's important if you do decide to write your own code that you only put these zero width characters in the spaces between words. If you do put them in the words themselves, then things like Grammarly or other spell checkers will detect the, ab the abnormal word and think it's misspelled. So obviously you don't want uh, anyone to just easily be able to detect it that way. So if we go over to this website, Stranographer, we can actually use this web page to encode and decode these messages, which is great. It means that anyone can hide these hidden messages without having to have some proprietary software installed or anything like that, or even software that might look suspicious on the computer. So you would just go here, make your public message, something like, and have your private message. And then you encode it and you'll get this here. And it's important to copy it. And the zero width characters will stay with this no matter where it goes, as long as it's copy and pasted or otherwise transferred between documents like that. So of course you could use that in more ways than just communicating with another individual secretly. You could also encode hidden messages in private documents. Uh, say for example, you're doing a startup and you have some really proprietary uh, secret sauce stuff you're developing, right? And you're afraid that one of your newer team members might not be trustworthy, they might be working for a similar startup. You just go and you would encode one of these messages with each individual person's name. And so you give Bob a document where Bob's name is hidden in zero width characters throughout the document. And that way, if it ever does leak, you can just take that document and you run it through a program like this and you find your hidden message and you're like, oh, it was Bob, Bob leaked the document. Let's press our lawsuit and recover damages. Now, if you want to make this a little safer and you don't quite trust this website, because for all you know, it could be recording these messages or saving them some other way. Or if you just want a little extra security, you can go to the source code down here, which I have pulled up here, and you could actually edit these again with the other zero width characters that I mentioned before. But that being said, I wouldn't interpret any of this as any kind of encryption. So if you really want to do the whole Craigslist super spy uh, thing to communicate with another individual, I strongly recommend using something like PGP and having pre-shared keys. And then that way you can take that PGP encrypted message and then encode it with a zero width characters and put it in the ad. But another way you could use it if you wanted to is the kind of notion that no one looks for a secret compartment within a secret compartment idea. That meaning, you know, you can send a PGP email and then use zero width characters within that encoded PGP email. And that could be anything. It could be a code word exchange, just so you know that the other person you're exchanging with isn't sending this email under duress or being forced to encrypt it and send you a false email or whatever system you wanna set up. Now, that being said, if you do want to use this in terminal, there are options to do similar things in terminal, such as ZWFP. Uh, this relies on the Go programming language. So if you have Go or you want to install Go, you could do this from terminal. Now it's important to remember that this program is going to use different characters for the zeros and ones than Stranographer does. So you can't just have one person encode with Stranographer and then another person uh, decoding with ZWFP unless you altered the code to have the exact same characters used for zeros and ones. Now, if you ever find yourself in a situation where you think someone 
might be trying to use the whole canary method to see if you're leaking documents or if you just generally want to check if random ads on Craigslist have these zero width characters in them, there's two easy ways to do it. Uh, the first thing you could do is go to a website called DiffCheck. Essentially, it's a program designed to take two text documents and highlight the differences between them. But if you copy and paste a message in there, you'll see all of these dots and those dots are actually these Unicode characters. And you can kind of see if you hover over each one, the hexadecimal code for each character. So that means if you found that your company was trying to do this to you and try to figure out leakers and you wanted to leak something or you wanted to be a whistleblower, you could actually copy these characters, just these characters, and then exchange them with the characters in another person's secret message. For example, in the Bob situation, he could take Alice's document, exchange Alice with Bob, and then when it leaks, it looked like, oh my God, Alice leaked this document when it was really Bob. But the company wouldn't be able to know the difference. But if you're just wanting to leak it and not frame anyone, then you could just go ahead and delete, delete, and you should be fine. Now, another way would also be to use a Chrome extension called replace zero width characters with emojis. Uh, this is really just a fun extension. It's not gonna work automatically every time you load a page, but if you install it and run it on a web page, then it'll go through the text and automatically detect these zero width characters and just replace them with random emojis. So when you're looking through a document and you see a whole big block of emojis, you know something's up. Additionally, if you're on a Windows system, you could use a program like Notepad++ and that'll actually display the zero width characters so you can go through, delete them or edit them any other in any other way. Zero width characters are a really useful tool to have in your toolbox. However, it's important to remember their limitations. They're not encrypted. So if you're using this as a secret way of communicating, you really should use encryption like PGP with it as well. If you're using this as a method to flush out leakers, remember that they can find out what you're doing and potentially trick you by swapping their secret message with someone else's secret message. Or if they're savvy, they can just take a screenshot or some other external photo of the document and it won't be transferred. However, those strategies also have their own limitations. So they'll probably get called in the end anyway. If you like this episode, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you had trouble, check the link in the description below and if you have ideas for future episodes, you can contact me on Twitter at the underscore Hoyd. Thanks for watching and have a great day.